thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Thanks for your awesome support and all the wicked stuff that you post online. We oh, see it and we love it. Oh, cheers. Well, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be doing our music if it wasn't for you. So oh. and people like you, you know, like without the yeah. support. So thank you. When you first started releasing music, how were you promoting yourselves and how is that different to how you're promoted now? When we first started, we would burn CDs and we would print out little stickers to put on the CD and we would play coffee houses and little bars or we would busk on the street and we would hand out these CDs for free. And it was amazing the power of that. Like in Vancouver at that time, you know, we, we passed out hundreds of these CDs and, and that was enough to get a little wave of awareness of our humble little project. Um, so it was very word of mouth and yes. hand to hand. Whereas now it's like, it's, the, it's a similar, uh, it's a similar formula. It's just the, the tools are different and the reach is farther. So, you know, you're still trying to give stuff away, but it's online and it's on TikTok and it's on social media and it steers to streaming as opposed to album purchase. So not much has changed and at the same time everything has changed um what obstacles did you come across like in the early days with your promotion i think once we got our feet on the ground and were actively in the business and touring and on a record label um the biggest obstacle was just getting on the radio at that and the radio had all the power there wasn't streaming there wasn't TikTok. that's where people discovered new bands quite often was driving in their car and turning on the radio and so whoever was in control of making those playlists had a lot of power in terms of what band got heard and so for us we were a little more strange a little less cookie cutter and so it was, it was harder to get on the radio like we did okay in canada on the radio quite well and you know thank the heavens because if it wasn't for that i don't think we would have survived for as long as we had um as as a exclusively successful canadian band but for 16 years we couldn't pay someone to get us on american radio um do you find it easier or harder to promote your music now um i think it's it's easier to feel free within the task because you're not relying on radio gatekeepers. Um, but it's harder because you, you need to be more of a online personality. You need to have a face and an authentic aura and you need to go on TikTok and flap your gums at everybody all day long. Yeah. And I think that's really, it's really hard on artists, you know, like right now the, it, 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 it almost feels like an epidemic of the soul being crushed because artists have such a hard time jumping on TikTok and advertising their own art. And I get it. I get it. I do it. And I'll still do it because, you know, I've been around long enough that I, I, I really know how hard it is to to be in the biz. Yeah. And and Mother Mother is so lucky to be where we are and to have survived this long. So I'll I'll lovingly, happily try my best to to be on TikTok and, and to do the dance as truthfully as I can, but, uh, you know, let it be known it's hard and it, and there is a conflict of the soul. So that is why marketing is so difficult today. 
So how do you go about seeking inspiration for your creativity? And if you're stuck in um, like a creative block, how do you get yourself out of it? Well, I think a good, okay, first question. I mean, we're on this hospitable planet with the elements and with nature and with the animal kingdom and the human spirit. So, I mean, inspiration's everywhere. There's a million amazing books and a million amazing poems. Uh, right there on your phone, you can look up anything. Um, it's all there. And it, the question is, are you choosing to look at it? Are you, are you choosing to be awake to the abundance of magical inspiration that's all around us all the time? Um, and that's more the question, and which I think relates to the writer's block question. It's like writer's block kind of only occurs if you've let yourself fall asleep and let yourself uh, neglect how magical life can be and it's in that moment that you realize this that you need to or you should if you're interested in getting out of writer's block begin to change your daily lifestyle um and you know there's lots of ways to do that being on the phone less is probably the most profound way and just being more present in your day journaling um taking photos for me that's a big part of it um just spending more time with the instrument and spending quality time uh personal time where the goal is not to make something that pleases someone the goal is to make something that pleases you it's like a great a great creative prompt would be okay go to your studio and make something that you plan on nobody hearing ever. Like, how would that change your process? If you didn't for one second consider how someone else would feel about what you're making today. Yo. Yo. <laughs> uh, all good. Um, cool. So yeah, I think where I left off was like, I think a great creative exercise would be to make something that you plan on never sharing with anybody ever and how would that spirit affect your creative process how do you normally go from your acoustic tracks to being it to it being a fully produced song well i mean when i demo a song i'm at my computer and i have a lot of tools to flesh out my ideas i can program drums i can like uh map in string parts i can uh sing backups i can kind of create a really um complex roadmap if i so choose and then uh once we get into the studio as a band it's like okay where did i go wrong in the demo process and how can we improve what was laid out and that just involves trying everything you know like fast hi-hats slow hi-hats no hi-hats you know like yeah. you just got it it's just time you just have to try everything and then you just wait until it's like oh that's it what actually is your favorite part of creating and producing a song um demoing demoing alone uh without the pressure of making anything perfect what, sort what of be, you... being being in the birth canal of a song. Uh, did did uh, did I just ask favorite bit or the hardest bit? Because I don't remember what I just asked. F favorite. You <laughs> okay. Are, you asked the favorite. Okay. Uh, what's what's the hardest part? The hardest part is not killing the charm and the innocence that you found in the demo when making the proper recording. Yo. Back.
when you put in your lyrics over your music, do you have like a technique that you use to like put your lyrics and melodies over that? I think probably like a lot of people, it starts out as gibberish most of the time. Um, and then the syllables, they kind of, they rule. They're, they're in charge. Um, it's less about what I want to do and, and just what the sound of the nonsense wants to do. And it'll find a word and I go, ooh, I like that word. That, that word means something. I don't know what yet, but that word is the inroad to the message. And at that point, I'll kind of like put on my thinking cap and and try to shape the uh, the theme. But I just try to get out of the way, honestly. Like that's I think the the best advice I could give to anyone in the creative process. Just get out of the way. Like you know, think like a, a hippie for a second. You know, we're just antennas. We're just the portal or the conduit for the creative energy that's floating around in the universe and the empty the more empty we are the more access it has to flow through us and come out as something special like i don't necessarily believe that to be scientifically true but i believe it to be metaphorically true only because that practically helps my creative process if i was sitting there like oh all the onus is on me I'm responsible for making something great. I'd like crush under the the pressure. If I can kind of blame it on the universe or blame it on my capacity to be open or closed, I find it's a much more productive philosophy to uh, to hold. So um, with the song Normalize, when you first made it, you said uh, on TikTok and stuff that you didn't like it. What was it that made you want to keep writing it and instead of just chucking it out the window, throwing it away? It wasn't so much the um, the writing, it was the production. I, I wrote the song, was happy with the writing, and then we got into the studio and spent like a lot of time building this, this very fast, higher key, busy, yeah. like almost mathematical production. There's just lots of little rhythmic components poking out and you know interweaving and the vocals were very chipper and it just felt like computer music no, okay. and i wanted it to just feel more raw like a band um bleeding a little bit oh that's really cool so we slowed it down yeah we slowed it down we, we changed the key um stripped it all away took all the drum samples out just raw drums for the most part uh you know like less less is more yeah. it still sounds pretty dense but it's not as dense as it was how do you normally texture your mu like your music is it like do you use synths or pads and stuff <laughs> underneath it to make it feel full yeah um i think often you know bass is is a big discussion it's like if you can get the bass feeling wide and deep, um, you're, you know, you're doing a lot right there. And also like, you know, you have subs in your bass, but then there's also that sort of mid range in the bass. So doubling the bass and like pitching it an octave higher and then distorting it. So you can hear the bass screaming through on a phone. Like sometimes uh -huh. when you have a sub, a, a bass that's nice and deep, you hear it in speakers, but you don't hear it through a phone nor in small speakers because it doesn't have the the frequency range to pick up those subs so you got to make sure your bass has mid-range and a yeah, good way to do that that's like a problem yeah. that i usually have you know like when you have to do like the car test or something like put it in a different yeah. place play it on different speaker i can never get the bass through on my phone yeah you just got to make sure the lows are nice and stable yeah and then and then double it up and distort it and pitch it and make sure it's poking through on the mid-range. And I mean, with Mother Mother, there's so many vocals, they kind of deal with a lot of the texturing. It's like often if you if you start filling it up with pads 
and other elements, then it it fills in the holes where the intimacy of the vocal would otherwise shine through. And so oh. you kind of have to pick your battles. It's like, do you want things to feel really rich and wide and full? Or do you want people to like hear the spit off that word? What is like the most interesting creative thing that you've ever done in a song or album? Um, well, on our album Inside, that was an album where I really got into, uh, I guess, uh, field recording is what you might call it. Um, you know, it was a pandemic, like the city was dead. And I just kind of like walk around with my phone and be like recording sinister industrial sounds or like anything. Like there was this homeless guy who's just dragging a shopping cart down this alley one night and it just had such an amazing sound. I just kind of followed him and recorded <laughs> him. And, oh, that's great. You know, no one will know how sad and and potent that moment was and how how much there was in that moment when they hear that they'll just hear it as like oh that's like some little percussion or something but you know like i know i can like yeah. tap into that song go like i went out into the world i walked down a dark alley i found that guy and i recorded him and then i went back to the studio and i put it into the music and so that means something to me it's like it's a portal into a, a wider conversation about life and people and circumstance. And it's not just you're at the studio and you're going through splice and you're picking a percussion item. So the, to me, that really enriches the creative process is, is the field recording. There was another instance where um, I was in a playground and you know in covid like people weren't kids weren't allowed to play in mid yeah. playgrounds so they had caution tape strung up around the swings it was very like dystopian right and there was i live in a pretty like rough neighborhood in vancouver and so th there's a lot of street people kind of hanging out and doing their thing and i was in this playground it was completely empty except for one fellow who you know clearly was a street guy and had some problems and he was just swinging by himself on this swing and it was going <laughs> and a total beautiful rhythm with a little pitch and um he had he had a little tiny speaker in his pocket and it was kind of playing this weird music and the whole thing was was really musical and really dark and and really powerful and i just kind of just walked up beside him and just sort of leaned against you know the the swing set and just kind of took out my phone and recorded for a bit like he was in another place he had no idea i was standing there and then i went back to the studio and made a loop and put some really dark piano on it and that turned out to be an, an interlude on inside called breathe and yeah. you know so that that right there like that might as be that might as well be one of the best days of my life yeah, you know just, what i mean yeah like the, the sound of those swings were one of the things that sticks out to me on that album as well i was like oh that that's a bit weird like to put in an album i was like oh yeah <laughs> when I, I mean it's it. cool it's cool that you heard it as swings i it almost just kind of just sounds like a creaking yeah, I thought it was a creaking door, but now that you said it was swings, I was like, oh, that's... Oh, it was like a door or something purposely recorded, like, just... Yeah, yeah, the, but yeah, like I like it when there's when there's not a purpose, right? Like, when you're just out there in the world and, like, you know what we were talking about earlier, like, how do you get out of writer's block? If yeah. I was walking down that road and I was so busy thinking about my miserable life and my bills or you know the fight i had with my girlfriend or you know these things that we think about when we're walking through our day and we're not paying attention that's when we're, we get into writer's block 
but if we're paying attention then you start noticing it's like the art of noticing right that's that's a that's a phrase that's out there and i th i just think it's such a a powerful act is is the art of noticing what is beautiful what moves you and what could be material whether that's sonic sound bites whether that's you know a fucked up conversation someone's having at a bus stop yeah you know it's like wake up and and be a scavenger be a hunter for creative elements in in your day yeah because i watched your um ted talk a few months ago and then since i oh, watched cool. that i was like wow i was like noticing like I, I it made me realize how my brain kind of works as well like with picking stuff out and stuff because um like i my thoughts just like go like just constant so yeah. it kind of helped me figure out what i am actually noticing in things oh and that's then, cool and oh, then well, I thanks, started, thanks for watching yeah. it yeah it's great i love it i've watched it loads of times like just like recapping and stuff oh but, cool um, you should try um this thing called uh uh morning pages um you know when like we wake up we're kind of still in the dreamscape mm -hmm. And it takes a few minutes to kind of like, you know, tuck into reality. Um, but that little space when you when you wake up, when you're kind of straddling the line between reality and the dreamscape is is a cool place. And so, like, if you wake up and don't even go to the bathroom, don't get a glass of water, go straight to a pad of paper that you put out on your table the night before with a pen on top of it. You wet your eyes open, you get out of bed, you go to that pad of paper and you write three full pages and the rule is the pen is not allowed to stop so you don't get to think you don't get to premeditate it's like whatever is inside of you whatever yeah. is bubbling still in that little dream zone you know that's what you want to come out and if you get stuck then you have to write the same word over and over and over again until something starts flowing and if, if you do that for 30 days straight every morning, I guarantee you, your life will change creatively. Wow. I'm, defi I'm definitely going to do that. That because sounds how, how, do we, how do we wake up, right? We, we, we wake up and we fucking, uh, you know, get on our phones and we, we immediately start to distract ourselves when we wake up. And what we do when we do that is we, we close the door of our soul. We, we, we silence the voice of the dreamscape. And, you know, which is essentially the voice of your subconscious, which is where a lot of this art comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not like people are sitting around with their thinking caps, like tuned into their left brain lobe or whatever and going, how shall I be creative? It's not how it works. It's like it comes from someplace. It comes from the subterranean, dark underworld of our psyches. And if, if we're constantly distracting ourselves in our lives, in our days, then that door is shut. And you got to pry it open somehow. And, and those morning pages, it's not my idea. It comes from a book called The Artist Way. It's, it's a very powerful way to unearth your subconscious. I want to write more creatively with my lyrics. Can you give me any tips on how to do that? Well, the, the last piece of advice will help. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, what uh, lyricists are you listening to right now? And you're like, wow that's amazing i want to do that are you uh, do you do you actively listen or read poetry or, or lyricism by artists who are doing the thing that you want to do yeah your stuff <laughs> i set you up for that yeah yeah you the test. <laughs> i think vibe check you know like for me when i was a kid and i discovered the pixies it was sort of like oh you're allowed to do that with language, you know? And it was like, you're allowed to dig for fire. You're allowed to talk about a bone machine and squeal and gibberish and just be extraterrestrial with your words and your language. It's like, oh, okay, that, 
that resonates, I want to do that. And so it's like you kind of study it a bit, like write it down. And maybe like a good exercise would be to take a verse of like your favorite verse in the world by someone and paraphrase it, like write the same word, same verse, but paraphrased. And that would just be an exercise where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm using a model of something I, I highly appreciate. So I know if I express the same thing, I'm already, you know, one step successful. So now let's just see if I can find other interesting words to paraphrase this thing. And, you know, that could take you an hour. And it's like, how do you write better lyrics? Like you write better lyrics. Like you sit down and you find avenues and exercises and techniques to fill your time. And, and you, you get to the other side of that exercise and you go, wow, like my life has changed because I chose to do something different, unique, strange, um, and new and difficult. And it's like you, you start teaching yourself what you're capable of. You can't just sit around and go, I want to write better lyrics and yeah. just, and just sit, sit down with a guitar and go, oh, I'm not writing better lyrics, but I want to, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It's, it's sort of like, if you want to learn anything, the, the knowledge or the skill, it doesn't just possess your spirit magically. Typically, um, you kind of have to do stuff. So yeah, study, study the greats, do the morning pages, um, cut words out of a magazine and then pick them out, rearrange them. That's what David Bowie did. Huh. Use magnetic poetry on your every day, write a magnetic poetry poem. Lots of stuff. That's all of them now anyway. <laughs> Thank cool. you so much for doing that. That is, oh, you're, yeah, you're no, legend. that was fun. Yeah. Okay. Are you um, coming up to a show next year? I wanted to come to quite a few. I've got tickets to Sheffield, Nottingham and Birmingham. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks I, I wanted to come to more, but trains and stuff are all. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's probably, that's probably plenty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What but, um, what uh, what song do you want to hear live? Oh. If you had to pick one, I've got. I'm gonna go and look down now. Oh, I was gonna ask as well, and it's okay if not. But um, could I come in and watch a sound check by any chance? Yeah, for sure. Oh, you, nice. if you want, you can you you can come to the meet and greet the uh, VIP thing. Yeah, I've got tickets for that in the um, Birmingham one. But the other two, okay. Got, the other two have just got normal tickets. But if I can, okay. Well, yeah, you can you can do whatever you want. Um, I will let my management know that you would like some special access. Thank you so much. I don't know what I want to hear live now because <laughs> you you have so much stuff and it's just. I know it's it's been hard to write a set list to be honest. Think Reaper Man. Oh shit! Reaper, it's Reaper Man not or on the set list? Huh? It's not on the set list. Maybe we can uh, do it um, at the meet and greet. That'd be good. Do yeah. the acoustic. Yes. That'd be dope. That's a good idea. Reaper Man at the acoustic. Okay. Or Modern Love. Wait, these are some <laughs> deep cuts. I love those ones. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I listen to your stuff all the time. Just. Wherever I go, if I'm feeling like down or something, just mother, mother, straight away. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That means a lot to me. Thank you. And thank, thanks just for being a great human out there working hard to you live your dream. It's inspiring. <laughs> uh, yeah. Keep like going. You, like you, you've inspired me so much, like with everything that I do, because I do like photography. I've got like more into art and stuff because of Molly's stuff. Uh, I'll pass I that along. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, what time is it there? Uh, ten past five. So I bet it's like well, it's right. proper early for you. 
I've been bombarded with nine. questions early in the morning. You know, I had an interview before this too with the, uh, someone in Prague, which is oh, wow. cool. Yeah, so it's a good morning. I'm a lucky guy yeah. to talk to cool people across the world. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your time. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. I like it's mad. <laughs> I've been ex like, so excited pleasure. about it all day. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Well, you did great. I loved your questions. And uh, yeah, we appreciate your support and we think you're awesome. So just oh, thank keep, you. keep saying yes to stuff and stay awake to the beauty of the world. And um, someone once said that the meaning of life, life is to enjoy the passage of time. So I hope that you enjoy the passage of time today. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. This Take is going to help me so yes, much. Cheers. Thank you. I'll let you awesome. I'll tag you and stuff in the magazine. Sounds whatever. good. And we'll, we'll be in touch about yeah. uh, the tour. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah.